One of the really useful things you can use a shell alias for is providing an easy way to CD into various frequently used folders. But one of the problems I find with doing this method is it's very easy to start losing track of which of the aliases actually are supposed to be for CDing. Because what you're probably going to have is, let's say, you want to go to your... I don't know, some random repo you have, you might name it the name of the repo, or you want to go to your pictures folder, it might just be called pictures, for example. But doing it like this, if you forget what it's actually called, there's no easy way to work out what that alias was supposed to be. Unless you go and do something like put CD at the front of every CD alias, there's no way to easily query for these. So today we're looking at go to, which is kind of similar to something like z.lua, but unlike z.lua, it doesn't generate the aliases as you move around. This one, you go and set the aliases yourself, so it's much more closer to what you do inside of your shell. If there's one improvement I would make basically straight away before even using the application, I would go and make an alias named G and then make it run the go to command because otherwise you have to write out go to every single time, which isn't that many extra characters, but is going to take a little more time than something like just writing CD. So I've actually made a couple of aliases before we got started. If we go and run go to dash L, this is going to list out all of the aliases. Now to actually go and use one of the aliases, you don't have to go and remember what they're called. This is where it actually gets really, really useful. So if we go and run the go to command, and then I try to do tab completion, as we can see inside of ZSH, it lists out all of the aliases I currently have made. So let's go to the one for website. And if we run that, now we've CD'd into my website. So let's go and make a new alias. The way we do this is with the dash R option. So go to dash R, then we pass in the name to the alias. So I'm going to go with, let's call it video. And then we have to pass in the path we actually want to go to. So let's go to home slash Brody slash video slash YouTube slash... Let's go to my to upload folder. And if we go and register this, as we can see, it gives us a confirmation message telling us it's been done. And if we go run the go to dash L now, as we can see, there's another new alias in here. And we can go to go to and tab complete to that one or write out the name, whatever we want to do. And if we run that, now we're in that directory. And likewise, we can unregister an alias by doing a go to dash u. So register and unregister, then passing in the name. So in this case, we're going to do video, run that. It has been unregistered. And from this point on, we can no longer run that. One issue I do have with dash l is there's no way to actually filter the results. Obviously, you can go and filter with the tab completion, but just doing the listing out can be incredibly useful as well. What I mean by this, though, is if we do something like go to dash L, and then I pass in, let's say, PI, what you would probably expect here is only include results that have a consecutive P and then an I in their name or in their path. But in this case, it doesn't actually change the results we see. And it's not just because there is a P and there is also an I in this path. If we do something instead, like, let's say, just a bunch of Zs, it still returns the exact same result. It's not a major deal, and it's not like they advertise the feature and then it just doesn't work, but it would be really nice to actually see there. So one other thing we can go and do is take one of these named aliases and then expand out the path. So if we do something like go to dash X and then pass in, let's say, pick. So instead of seeding us into that location, instead what it's going to do is just output the path that's actually attached to the alias. I can think of one use case that would be good for that feature. What you could probably do is make a wrapper around this for something like, say, D menu. And then you would have the person use D menu as the interface to find the named aliases. And then once they include the name, then you would go and open up, say, I don't know, a terminal window CD'd into that location. One thing that I really wish more programs like this had is the dash C option. So while you can't go and make an alias for a directory that does not exist, that just will fail. Sometimes what you might do is you might go and delete a folder or maybe move a folder, and that alias is actually still going to be inside of the application. So let's say I go and change the name of my pictures folder. If we go and do go to dash L, that still does exist. But if we try to do a go to dash pick, that doesn't work. 
So if we do a go to dash C, that is going to clear out any of the aliases that no longer exist. As you can see, that is no longer there, so we won't accidentally try to use it. Now, amusingly, this interacts with the push D and pop D functionality already present within your shell. I'll leave a link to my video in the description down below and linked up the top, where I went into a lot of detail on how they actually function. But basically what they do is let you interact with the directory stack. So when you CD between different locations, your shell effectively keeps track of a stack, allowing you to go backwards into that history. So right now my directory stack looks like so. We have my home directory, the place I'm currently in, and the place I was in previously was also my home directory. So if I go and do a go to dash P, this is for pushing something onto the stack. And the only alias we have left is the website alias. If we go and run ders dash V again, as we can see, the stack is now a little bit larger. So we now have my current location here, and we also have this one right here. Now, the reason why it's duplicating stuff is because I also have the automatic stack addition turned on in my shell, which is making it act kind of weirdly. If you don't have that turned on, though, it won't be doing this duplication. So now if we want to go back to the previous directory, what we can do is a go to dash O. And now we're back in the home. And this can be done as many times as you want. I don't really know when you would actually use this functionality, though. In my Push D and Pop D video, I did list out some use cases for using those directly. But I don't know for this more limited use case when it would actually be useful. I guess going back to a previous directory might have a purpose. But if the previous directory was just an alias then going to the alias directly might be a more consistent way of actually getting there. Maybe someone has a use case for it, but I certainly don't. That's pretty much it for the functionality, so let's get to the installation. Now, while there is this install script here, and you can go and use that if you really want to, as we'll see, it's just a single shell script. So you really don't need the installation script. What I would recommend doing is just downloading that script, placing it somewhere on your system. In my case, I've just put it into my scripts directory, but we're not actually going to be running this program directly. What we're actually going to be doing instead is sourcing it inside of our shell RC file. So for me, I'm on ZSH, so I'm going to use my ZSH RC. And if you're using bash instead, then you'll use your bash RC. Now for bash, all you need to do is do a source and then source whatever location you've actually put the go to script in. In my case, it's sitting inside of my scripts folder. So tilde slash scripts slash go to SH. And that's basically all you would need to do for bash. For ZSH though, you need to make sure you actually have completion enabled. So basically do a zmod load zsh slash comp list and then do a comp init and once that's done you should have completion working if it's not check a dedicated video on doing zsh completion but that should be everything you need to do the github also mentions you could load the bash comp init from zsh but there is a built-in zsh solution so you probably should just do the zsh method instead so I mentioned z.lure at the start of this video, and the reason why I did so is I feel like they are two different approaches for the exact same option. One is going to generate the aliases as you go, and the other, being this one, is going to require you actually setting the aliases yourself. Personally, I prefer the z.lure method, just so over time it can sort of adapt to what I'm doing and I don't really have to worry about managing what aliases actually need to exist. But I think this is still a pretty good solution regardless. And if you don't like this, you can do most of what this is doing directly in your shell anyway. It sort of just makes it a little bit easier to manage. That's going to be pretty much it for me, and let me know your thoughts on the application in the comment section down below. And if you like this video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here and support the channel, please do go check out my Patreon subscribe, Sally Berapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.